Well, good. Is it morning? Good morning, everybody. We have church at 1230, so I have to make sure that I'm in the right place doing the right things. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will. Amen. Amen. It's such a blessing and an honor to be here with you all, and it's good to see some new faces, and it's good to see some faces that I've loved for a while. And so I am just grateful to be here, and I just want to get directly into the word. So I am going to be in Numbers chapter 9. Uh, if you have a Bible, Numbers chapter 9, in your bulletins, there is a sermon note, so you can follow along with me with the sermon note. But I'm going to be in Numbers chapter 9. And we're going to be talking about when the cloud moves. When the cloud moves. If you have it, say, I have it. If you need a minute, say, wait a minute. All right, I will wait for you. It's important to me that you're able to read the word for yourself. I'm so grateful for all of you that were able to travel and be with here, us today. Uh, so I, I saw some faces that surprised me, and I'm glad to see those faces. And I saw some family, and I'm just very glad to uh, have to be here with you all. And I am going to begin reading at verse 15. Numbers. Chapter 9, beginning at verse 15. On the day of the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant law was set up. The cloud covered it. From evening till morning, the cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. This is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from the tent, the Israelites set out. Wherever the cloud settled, the, Is the Israelites encamped. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at his command, they encamped. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they would encamp, and then at his command, they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only for only from evening till morning. When it lifted in the morning, they set out, whether by day or by night. Whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days or a month or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. And the Lord's command, at the Lord's command, they encamped, and at the Lord's command, they set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with his command through Moses. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to spend time in your word. God, we thank you that no matter what happens with the cloud, the people did what you asked them to do. God, we glorify you and we praise you and we invite your spirit to be in here with you. I ask God that you would just hide me behind your cross right now in the name of Jesus and that you would speak through me and you will speak to your people. You will speak to their hearts. You will speak to their minds and you will speak to their spirits, oh God, and they will, be, they will leave out of this place built up because they have come in contact with you we glorify you we praise you we lift you up because there is none like you and it's in the name of Jesus that we pray amen amen so when the cloud moves when the cloud moves there are certain things that the people of Israel had no choice over God determines when the cloud moves you didn't see the people of Israel get up and say hey I think it's time for the cloud to move, and I'm just going to move with the cloud. No, the people of God had to wait for God to move the cloud. So when the cloud moves, then the people moves. It's not determined by you. It's not determined by anything that you have done or you can do. God determines when the cloud is going to move. 
What we have to do, once God determines when the cloud is going to move, we have to learn how to be content. We have to learn how to be content when the cloud moves, and we have to be ready when the cloud moves. We have to be content to know that God is in control. We have to be content and know that God has a plan. We have to be content and know that God is the one that is on the throne. But also, we can't get too comfortable that we're not ready to move. Because you never know when God is going to move the cloud. Sometimes the cloud was there for a day. Sometimes the cloud was there for a year. Sometimes the cloud was there for a month. They didn't know when the cloud was going to move. All they knew is they needed to be content when the cloud moved and they needed to embrace, they needed to be content when the cloud moved. And they needed to be ready to move whenever God said it was time to move. See, the thing about it, sometimes we get to a place where we get so, con we get so content that we don't want to move. We don't want to do the next thing. We don't want to be in the next place. We want to stay where we are, but we have got to be content to do what God has said for us to do. So in the midst of that, you have to celebrate the past. Celebrate the things that God has done. Celebrate how he has used you. Celebrate the season that you find yourself in, but then you also have to embrace the future. Don't get so comfortable in the past that you're not willing to move. God said that we need to move whenever he says move. But see, if there was a point where the children of Israel were like, well, I remember the onions and I remember the leeks and I remember what happened back in Egypt and I kind of want to go back because I'm not comfortable. No, 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 no. You've got to celebrate but then move on because if you get too comfortable where you are, you're going to move, you're going to miss the next move of God. God wants you to move. Somebody say move. God wants you to move. When the cloud gets ready to move, baby, you got to have your bags packed and you got to be ready to go because God is saying it's time to do something else. Don't get lost in what I used to do. Get found in what I'm about to do. I'm going to say that again. I kind of liked it. Don't get lost in what I used to do. Be found in what I'm about to do. So don't get too comfortable wherever you are because God is a God of movement. Somebody say movement. When the cloud moves, it's a new season. When the cloud moves, it's a new season. And God is the God of your seasons. God is the God of your seasons. See, one thing about seasons we have to understand is seasons don't stay the same always. What do seasons do? Seasons change. And so we have got to be ready for the move. We have got to be ready for the change. We have got to be ready for the transition. We have got to be ready when God is ready so that we can move. I want to talk to you today for just a few minutes about Christian seasons, because I believe that God has given us a picture of what our seasons can look like. And I don't want you to be confused when a new season comes, because we need to expect that in our lives, things are going to change. Things are not always going to be the same. So I want to give you a picture of what a season looks like, what Christian seasons, what, what, how our times are in God's hands. Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 29 says, And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until the day when I drink it with you in my Father's kingdom. I really want to focus on the beginning. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Now, I want you to, I know that this is the communion uh, scripture. I know that we use this communion, but I want you to, I, I just need you to stay with me for a minute because I want to 
look at this in a different kind of way a little bit. I believe that Jesus also used this as a picture of the seasons that Christians go through. There's a taking, there's a breaking, there's a blessing, and there is a giving. The bread is representative of Jesus' body. I want you to stay with me. Jesus was taken into the wilderness for 40 days, was he not? He was taken into the wilderness. After he was taken into the wilderness, he was blessed with the Holy Spirit that came and let upon him, and then his ministry started. Then after he was blessed, then he was broken through the cross. And after he was broken through the cross, then he was given to all of us so that we might have salvation. There's a taking, there's a blessing, there's a breaking, and there's a giving. Somebody say a taking, a blessing, a breaking, and a giving. And those are the seasons that I believe that each one of us, as Jesus' followers, we all are going to go through a taking, we're going to go through a blessing, we're going to go through a breaking, and we're going to go through a giving. The Bible says in Romans 12, verses 4 and 5, for just as we were members in one body and all the members do not have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ and individual, individually members of one another. The bread is representative of Jesus' body, but we are Jesus' body also. The bread is representative of Jesus' body, but we are Jesus' body also. So if there's a if there's a taking with the bread, there's going to be a taking with his body. If there's a a blessing with the bread, there's going to be a blessing with his body. If there's a breaking with the bread, there's going to be a breaking with his body. If there's a giving with the bread, there's going to be a given with his body. We are Jesus' body. And so what I want to do now, I just want to spend a few minutes, and I want to talk about each one of these. I want to talk about the taking. I want to talk about the blessing. I want to talk about the breaking. And I want to talk about the giving. And I want to use Moses as an example for this. The reason why I want to use Moses is Moses is the leader that God chose when the Israelites were in the wilderness. The, the, the scripture that we began with is a scripture where the Israelites are in the wilderness. These are the chosen people of God. They're the chosen people of God. They went through 400 years of slavery. God miraculously delivered them, and now they're in the wilderness. And so God, these are the people that were following the cloud of God, and Moses was the leader who was helping the people to follow the cloud of God. So in the beginning, we find in Exodus chapter 2, Exodus chapter 2, so when you find yourself in Exodus, this is the beginning of the book, and all of the children of Israel, all of the boys of Israel are being killed. And so Moses' mother had him, and she decided that she did not want her child to be killed. So she put him in an ark, and she, she put him down the river, so that hoping that somebody would come and be able to save her son. So now we're in Exodus 2, and it says, Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking, walking along the riverbank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrews' babies, she said. Then his sister said, Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. Taking is a preparation. So we've got this, we've got this scenario, and Pharaoh's daughter has said, this is going to be my child, but I cannot, I cannot at this point take care of him. He needs somebody to be able to take care of him. So, so his sister came and said, can we should I find a Hebrew woman to take care of this child for you? And she says, yes. What I want you to see that about the taking is taking is preparation. See, if Moses had went immediately into the house of Pharaoh, he might not have known who he was as a Hebrew. He might not have known who God was. He might not have known who his people was. He might not have known and had a connection to the people of God. The taking was preparing him for what God had created him for. 
The taking was preparing him for what God was creating him for. But the thing about taking that you must also understand is sometimes taking, it, it can be isolating. Sometimes you're in a place where you're surrounded by people, but nobody can understand what you're going through because you're in a place of isolation. The taking is preparation for what God has for you. I need you to understand that just because you're isolated, that does not mean that God is not in the midst of it. Just because you're in a place and it seems like nobody understands you, when you're in the taking place, this is a time for you to connect with God. This is a time for you to go in. This is a time for you to say, forget everything else. Forget everybody else that's around me. Let me connect with the one who's preparing me for something. See, in taking, you might not know what you're being prepared for. You just know that you're in a place of isolation. You, are, you know that you're in a place where you may feel lonely. You know that you're in a place where you just don't fit in with everybody else and with everything else that's going on. And you kind of wonder, what in the world is happening here? All of these people seem to be going la, 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 la di da happy-go-lucky. And here I am, and I'm in this place, and they can't understand me, and I can't understand them. But all you need to understand is is you need to get in a place where you can hear God. Taking is an opportunity for you to be prepared for what God has for you. Taking is not fun. I wish I could say that it was fun, but taking sometimes is not fun. Taking sometimes is a very difficult place to be. But I'm telling you, if you will allow God to begin to build you up and begin to do some things on the inside of you, because he knows where he's trying to take you. He knows what your purpose is. He knows what the plan is that he has for you. And if you will just allow God to prepare you in the midst of the taking, don't worry about who's not there. Don't worry about who's not, who's not saying that a girl, that a boy. Don't worry about who's going on and doing different things. You worry about what God has on the inside of you and what God has in front of you. And you say, God, if it's just me and you, I'm all right with that. If it's just me and you, I'm going wherever it is that you say we got to go. God, I, that's Brian Canoe. Oh, sorry. Uh, I know him. Sorry. God, I am with you. I trust you in the midst of the taking. I trust you, God. I trust you because I know that you're doing a work on the inside. I know that you're preparing me. I know that this is only a season that I'm going through. So when the cloud moves, my season will change. And I'm not going to be in the taking always. I'm not going to be in the taking always. I'm going to be able to move on to another place. Exodus 2.10 says, when the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter and he became her son. She named him Moses saying, I drew him out of the water. See, what I need you to understand is Moses, for maybe the first two to five years until he was weaned, was in the, in, was in the house of a slave. His mother was a slave. And as slaves, you know, they didn't have much. But on the day, now he didn't choose the day, his mother didn't choose the day, but on the day that Pharaoh's daughter decided that she was ready to come and get her son, his whole life changed. He was in a place of blessing. Can you imagine going from being a slave to being in Pharaoh's house? I mean, I don't know if y'all know who Pharaoh is, but Pharaoh is the man. Pharaoh is the king of Egypt. Pharaoh has money. Pharaoh has servants. Pharaoh has everything that you could imagine. So he went from a place of taking to a place of blessing overnight. But what you have to understand is blessing is a responsibility. The question I have for you is, can you stand to be blessed? Can you stand? I know y'all like, I don't know, but come try me out, Jesus. Try me out. Try me out. Can you stand to be blessed? Because when you're blessed, that's the season where it's easy for you to forget God. Because you think you did it yourself. You think that you're smart enough. You think that you got it going on enough so that you don't need God. So that's the season where you really don't, I, I don't really need to go to church. I, I got a golf game at, at uh, Sunday at 1. 
Oh, some of y'all don't play golf. Oh, but the NBA Finals is on, so you know, I really can't. Can you stand to be blessed? Are you going to get into a mindset where you're going to think that you've done all of this on your own, or are you going to remember that you're a steward over everything God has given you? See, God told the, told the children of Israel, when you get into this place that's flowing with milk and honey, when you get into this place, I need you to remember that it was the Lord your God who brought you here. And see, that's why blessing is a test, because you need to remember that it was the Lord your God that brought you here. And you need not forget that you are a steward over everything and an owner of nothing. So when God blesses you and God says, I want you to give this person $5,000, you know, $5,000, I don't even like them like that. Shoot, I was thinking about doing, you know, I had some things in my head. I wanted to do Jesus. I don't know. What about, what, what about giving, did, Jesus, I know you said 500 and not 5,000. I, I just know you did in Jesus' name. Can you stand to be blessed? God wants to bless you, but can you stand to be blessed? There is a responsibility. I want you to think about this. When Moses went into Pharaoh's daughter, his life was totally different. Imagine that you are the child of the president or imagine you're the child of the queen. You can't just go down to the mini mart. We don't even have mini marts, but you can't go there. Your life is totally different. Blessing is a responsibility. And we need to, as the people of God, understand that when you are in a season of blessing, you need to have your hands open and saying, God, this is yours. What will you have for me to do? Because it's not about me. It's about you. And it's about what you want to do in the midst of this time. Because I understand that if God can get it through you, he will get it to you. If he can't get it through you, why he going to give it to you? I want to be like a vessel. Jesus, whatever you need, here you go. Because there's more to the blessing of God than just my needs. He blesses me to be a blessing to other people. And that's not just money. That's time. That's commitment. That's, that's a whole lot of things that are bigger than just money. So I don't want you guys to just think that I'm talking about money. But you go from the taking, then you go to the blessing, then the cloud moves, and the season changes. Exodus 2, verse 14 and 15. The man said, who made you ruler? Okay, so Moses, let me, let me give you a little background. So Moses is in this place. And um, he sees this, this uh, Egyptian man, and he's fighting with this Hebrew man. And so Moses kills the, the Egyptian man, okay? And he buried his body so that nobody would know. The next day he comes up, and he sees two Hebrews fighting. Whoa, lost my shoe. He sees two Hebrews fighting. I'm just me, y'all. I'm just me. I can't help it. He sees two Hebrews fighting. So he goes up to the Hebrew man, and he said, why are you fighting with your brother? And the man said, who made you ruler and judge over us? Are you thinking of killing me as you killed the Egyptian? The, the, then Moses was afraid and thought, what I did must have become known. When Pharaoh heard of this, he tried to kill Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and went to live in Median, where he sat down by a well. When you get to the breaking, the breaking is a test. The breaking is those difficult seasons. The breaking is those seasons where you're wondering, God, have you forgotten me? God, have you left me? God, I don't understand what's going on. I've done everything that you've asked me to do. I've tried to be faithful in everything that you've asked me to do. And it seems as if all hell is breaking loose in my life. It seems as if my children have lost their mind. It seems as if my husband has just really totally lost his mind. It seems as if everything, my business is going wrong. Everything is going wrong. God, I don't understand. How, why am I in this place? Why am I in this place, God? I tried to do everything you said, but I'm still finding myself in this place. If you are not careful in the breaking, you can, you can get a victim mentality. 
This is the place where you can be in that woe is me. I don't understand why this happened to me. I don't understand why I'm going through this. I don't understand how, how I got to this place, God. I don't, I don't understand why this is happening. But see, the thing that I want you to know about the breaking, the enemy may be trying to break you, but God is trying to build you. See, when you're in this breaking place, God is trying to build character on the inside of you. When you're in this breaking place, God is trying to prune some things that you don't need and that can't go into the next season with you. When you're in this breaking place, if you will just pay attention to God and you will say, God, I don't understand, but I trust you. God, it hurts, but I trust you. God, I'm trying not to kill them, but I trust you. Where the enemy is trying to break you, God is trying to build you. So allow God to build you in the midst of the breaking, and you will come out of this thing so much stronger than when you went in. You can't have a victim mentality. You got to have an overcoming mentality. Whatever it is that comes my way, God said that I'm the head and not the tail. God said that I'm above and not beneath. God said that I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out. God said that I'm more than an overcomer. God said, see, in those times, you got to talk to yourself, baby, because it might not be nobody to talk to you. But you have got to let God build you up. Yes, I know it hurts. Yes, I know it's painful. But guess what? It's a season, and what do seasons do? Don't make a permanent decision based on a temporary situation. So many times we make permanent decisions based on temporary situations. Oh, but I, I just, I, I'm hurt, I just, no, nah, baby. Don't, don't do it. You will regret it. You will regret it. You will regret it. Whatever is going on, I need you to just say, God, I trust you. I know you're breaking me to build. And then when breaking comes, don't act like God don't love you. Don't act like God is not there. Don't act like he forgot about you because he did not forget about you. He's going to be with you just like he's with those Hebrew boys in the fire. He's going to be with you in the fire. And he's going to come out and you're going to be just fine. You need to be like Job, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. The psalmist says, it was good that I was afflicted because God is building you. And what he's building is going to be amazing. Then the cloud moves. And he moves into a new season. He's at this place now, and he just happened to be walking and he saw this bush that was on fire. So, you know, if you see a bush that's on fire and it's not being consumed, what you going to do? Go take a look. So he went and took a look. And so God began to speak to him out of the bush. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now... Go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Now Moses is in this place where God is giving him. He's gone through, he's been taken, he's been blessed, he's been broken, and now he's ready to be given. And when you are ready to be giving, giving is purpose. Giving is when you begin to move into what God has for you. Giving is is, is when you're in, the, in a place where you're saying, God, use me any way you choose. When you just say, yes, Lord. You don't even necessarily know what you're saying yes to, but you just say, yes, Lord, because I trust you. Yes, Lord, I trust you. However you want me to do, whatever you want me to do, yes, Lord, I trust you. What you have to understand is throughout these different seasons, you're going to, you're, you're going to uh, come in contact with different people different circumstances, different situations, but you need to be open to the move of God. 
however God is choosing to move. You need to say, God, I trust you. I trust you in plenty. God, I trust you in want. God, I trust you when I'm sick. I trust you when I'm healthy. I, God, I trust you when my marriage is going great. I trust you when my marriage is going bad. God, I trust you when I have straight A students. I trust you when my, when my child has fallen and is doing some crazy things. God, I trust you no matter what season I find myself in. God, I trust you because I know that you are the God of the season. And whatever season I find myself in, I will not be here always because you are the God of the season and my season will God is the God of the season and he wants us as believers to trust him wherever you find yourself if you continue to read Moses' story, you'll find that he was taken again, he was blessed again, he was broken again, he was given again. Don't think you're just going to go through this cycle once. Because this is, a, this is a journey that we're on. And you need to understand that God is in the midst of the journey with you. So over the next week, I would like for you to take some action. I'd like you to meditate on the scriptures in this message that we talked about. Pray about God's faithfulness and yours in this season, and then spend time praising God for where you are. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to spend time in your word. God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you might help us, oh God, to embrace the season that we're in, that you might help us, oh God, so that we might be able to move from the place where we are thinking that something is being done, done to us where we can open up our hearts and open up our minds and say, God, we thank you because you are in the midst of this season. Guide us, lead us. God, do what only you can do because we trust you more than anything. You are worthy of glory, honor, and praise, and we bless you for who you are. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.